In this programming assignment, we are learning about functions and how they can call other functions. Let's look at this first function that simply prints a dot. The name of the function here is called newline. You always start a function with the DEF keyword followed by a space. There's a colon at the end of the function definition. The brackets are empty because we're not taking any parameters, but more on that for another time. Uh, if we test this function out, uh, we'll see what it does and to test it you have to call the function so we'll type it exactly as the name is spelled with the empty brackets that actually serves as a function call so when we run it now we'll see it prints a dot it's very difficult to see uh, they could have asked to print anything I would have preferred it asked to print say a hashtag or something like that because that would have been easier to see right so um, I may use a hashtag just to illustrate that it's printing something. Uh, when we look at the question, we're asked to actually print um, three lines using a function call that's made up of this function here. So what does that look like? All right, so let's go ahead and move this down some more. And if you think about it, three lines would be three of this. Right, so we'll start by DEF. Now remember, it's very important when you're typing the name of a function, you follow the rules for naming variables. You can't start with a number, you can't start with certain characters, so you have to remember those details, okay? So the name of the function should be called three lines. It's not gonna take any arguments. Again, we'll, that will be explained a little later. Now, after you type the function definition, that's the first line there, it's important that you have a tab. Your function won't work if you, for example, try to type right there at the margin, right under the DEF keyword. You must have an indentation. You can press the tab key on the keyboard to get that in. It doesn't matter how many spaces you use, but you must be consistent. So if you use one tab, then the rest of the lines will follow that. So let's go ahead and type, oh, sorry, we're not gonna be printing. We're just gonna be calling the new line function three times. So we'll say new line Uh, we'll repeat that because yeah, we want it to print three lines and each of these function calls prints one line. So, of course, three times one gives you three. All right, so notice that all of the parts of the function body are in the same indent from the margin. Okay, just pay special attention to that. Now, if you wanted to test this function out, we can go ahead and call it. So remember, you call the function by typing the function name followed by the brackets and anything that may or may not be inside of it. There is no colon there because that was a function definition. We're just actually calling the function here. And let's go ahead and run it. So now we see it's printed three more lines. So the, it printed um, the first one before. I could comment this out to have this not work. So if I go ahead and let me just um, delete this output screen if I run it now. It'll just print the three lines. Remember, I'm using the hashtag, but it's really supposed to be a dot, but I just want you to be able to see the output a lot clearer uh, in this video. Then now we're asked to create a function called nine lines, and the nine lines function is going to be doing the same basic idea. You could actually use nine of the new line functions right here to print nine lines, but that's not going to be very smart. You have a function here that does three lines. We can use this three times because um, three times three would give us nine lines, right? Okay, so that's just some basic arithmetic there for you so you understand why we do uh, what we do. So we simply want to have the nine lines function um, created the same way we created the three lines function. All right, and there it is. So let me just um, comment this out so that it doesn't run. So you can use the hashtag to comment out code that you don't want to be active when you're testing your program. Let's go ahead and run this. Oh, I did not make a function call, so as you can see, I've fallen into the trap of something that I've actually warned you about. So I need to actually call the function so that it will run. So let's go ahead and run it. And you can see it printed nine lines there. If you count them, you'll get nine lines. Of course, I'll change this back to a dot. Uh, it's just that I wanted it to be able to be visible. So 
I can just simply change the dot here because that's where everything um, starts from. Now you see if I run the program again, you see it changes the dots, but I want it to be um, clearly seen. So let me just change it back to the hashtag. Or I could have used an asterisk just, uh, as long as I have something I could see um, really. But for some reason, um, you know, they chose a dot. All right, fine. And the 25 lines now is going to be a combination of how you put together these three lines, new line, and um, three line functions. So several function calls are going to be there. So let's look at one way that you can do it. And uh, when we're doing the um, clear screen function, as the programming question asks, it's really going to print a total of 25 lines. So let me just um, give you some explanation for that. Uh, by using some comments because I want you to be able to uh, not just see the code but actually understand what it is doing and why it is doing what it is doing. So let me go ahead and just comment out this temporarily so that that doesn't print anything. All right, so um, here's one way you can do it. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is just run this to show you what it does. So as you can see here, uh, the nine lines function was called here on line 32 on my replit screen. And then the clear screen function was called to print 25 lines. If you count this, you should get 25. So here's what the clear screen function is made up of that gives us 25 lines. Okay, so what we'd want to do is to see how many times we can get the biggest function printed from it, if you want to do it the shortest way. So the nine lines function is the biggest function we have. It prints nine lines, of course. So we can get at a maximum of two times because two times nine is 18, right? And that means, you know, if you subtract 18 from 25, you get seven. So that means we can only use nine lines twice. So we've done that twice there. And then the three lines could be used uh, after that. So we'd have 18 plus three, All right? That would be equal to 21. And because we want 25 lines, it means that we need um, four more lines, so we need another, so actually need another three lines, uh, plus three, and that would be close to 24, and then a single new line from the new line function. But there's another way that we could do it if we wanted to, so this would be the shortest way, it gives you the less, smallest number of, res of results. Uh, you could have used, um, you could have replaced this with three nine lines function with, with with three three lines function which would be very tedious so in other words what am i saying is that you would um okay you would actually put this in one two three so this is more work um but it, do, it does the same number of lines 25 lines because it only uses one version of nine lines and it uses three lines three times to compensate. All right, let me just go back to what we had before. So as you can see, we had the nine lines there. Okay, and let me go back to the adjustment. So you see the difference, see? So it still prints nine lines, but just that it takes more lines of code because we're using the shorter three lines function. Hope that makes sense to you. So when you actually check out the program, it really is simply about a function calling another function. Uh, so let me go back to the more efficient version of this function. Um, so if you notice here that this new line function, three lines function, are in the body of the clear screen function. So a function can be created by making it composed of other functions. Then we come to this line here, we have a placeholder, so it helps us to see that the nine lines started, as you can see over on the output screen and then the 25 lines was printed there. Um, you call the function by the function body name and the brackets. All right, so hope this helps you to see that function indentation is important. So notice that the nine lines function has more indenting space from, away from the margin and the three lines, but it's consistent. They're all in the same indent space above each other. The same for this one, even though this is closer to the margin. And you have the colon at the end of the um, function definition. Remember, the function definition is what that function actually is created to do, and the function calls would be example like what you have here. Well, this is commented out. All right, so I'm able to study and practice, and I hope this helps.